In this entry, I will discuss the differences between reality at the microscopic and the macroscopic levels. Last time, I talked about where quantum mechanics fits and called the domain that lies beyond measure the quantum noise. Let us suppose that the statistical nature of quantum mechanics can somehow be bridged so that quantum noise can be resolved into a structure by a deeper subquantum theory. Now, an objective realist would expect a complete microscopic theory to have pure dispersion-free properties in the limit of one particle. Also, causality should be restored, so that we can predict the states of particles from initial conditions and known forces. Empiricists would worry about how to measure such a particle, but need not because, as I said, a subquantum theory is beyond measure. Quantum mechanics, in contrast, is a theory all about measurement. I think we all have a really good idea of the reality around us. We know fact from fiction, and even though we might be fooled, we can usually work it out. But there is a question worth considering. Is reality at the one particle level the same as our macroscopic surroundings? Many who believe that quantum mechanics is the most fundamental theory criticize microscopic objective reality and label such subquantum theories as classical. But it is well known that correlations exist between microscopic particles that cannot be explained by any classical theory. In quantum mechanics, the property that describes these quantum correlations is called entanglement, about which I will come back to later. But are those critics right? Are local realistic subquantum theories classical? No, absolutely not. So be ready to consider that reality is different between the microscopic and the macroscopic. First off, the mechanics of any subquantum theory will be completely different from classical mechanics. Here we see Professor Lewin put his life on the line by demonstrating his faith in the conservation of mechanical energy. But he knew that he was safe because he knows that the pendulum cannot exceed its classical amplitude. Let's illustrate the oscillations of our quantum pendulum. Here is a classical turning point right on Professor Lewin's chin, which is a physical barrier, like a wall. A quantum pendulum can tunnel right through his chin. In other words, classical and quantum mechanics are quite different in many ways and have different predictions. It is more likely that a subquantum theory be closer to quantum mechanics than to classical mechanics, so there will not be too much that can be called classical in a subquantum theory. Those who call a subquantum theory classical are incorrectly applying notions from our macroscopic surroundings to the microscopic. Moreover, reality is different between the microscopic and macroscopic, even though both are objectively real. Both are local, both are complete, and both are deterministic. Reality is different between the microscopic and the macroscopic levels because of indistinguishability and resonance. These properties do not exist classically. You can always find differences between any two macroscopic objects, but you cannot tell one hydrogen atom from another nor one electron from the other. They are indistinguishable. That is, indistinguishability is a property that cannot be found in our macroscopic world. Resonance is another property unique to the microscopic. There are forms and structures that flip between one and the other without any obstacles. Let's look at indistinguishability. If you want to apply a mathematical description, say, by writing down the Hamiltonian in quantum mechanics to understand the hydrogen molecule bond, we label them so we can keep track of them. But labeling the two hydrogen atoms makes them distinguishable. And if we keep those labels, we're going to get the wrong answer. The hydrogen molecule bond is one of the simplest. Recall that a proton, A and B, are positively charged and the electrons are negatively charged. Since likes repel and unlikes attract, we have two repulsions between the two protons and the two electrons and four attractions between electrons and protons. It is impossible for us to apply quantum mechanics to any problem 
without labeling the parts to distinguish them so we can apply the mathematical equations. But labeling those two hydrogen atoms and those two electrons makes them distinguishable. And if we keep the labels, we get the wrong answer. In order to correct this, we have to make the two atoms indistinguishable in our calculation by symmetrizing the two forms. This is done frequently in quantum theory. In this case, shown schematically here, the symmetrized sum is called the exchange term in quantum chemistry. Remarkably, if we do not symmetrize, then the calculation misses 90% of the bond strength. This purely microscopic property of indistinguishable particles cannot be ignored. It is a major difference between the microscopic and the macroscopic. In other words, indistinguishability predicts new phenomena that cannot exist macroscopically.